Yeah, so one of the exciting parts of this class is that we ran an optional session where whoever is interested in doing the research side of the material uh, could solve open problems together. So we call this a problem solving session, but it's all of the problems are unsolved in the field. Uh, and so you know, it's not a required part of the class because it's okay to just learn the material, but if you really want to engage with what we're learning about, then you should try to advance the field and solve new problems beyond what we know how to solve. Um, and so every week uh, I have this session for two hours. That seems to be about the sweet spot. And I would come with uh, a couple of new open problems inspired by the material that we just covered in the last uh, week of lectures. Um, and so this, this is, I find, a really powerful combination in teaching where uh, you've just covered in, in one week uh, the the latest uh, that everyone knows. You know, everyone's uh, at the state of the art. They've just learned what what the best results are in the field, um, and so it's natural to ask, well, what's next? What would be the next step? How could we improve these results? What would be the next thing to analyze? And so the open problem session nicely dovetails with the lectures, where you know we've, it's just been a couple of lectures, so it's still fresh in the mind, and now we know all these techniques. Can we conquer this new problem? So the hardest part, of course, as a teacher, is picking out what is the right unsolved problem to work on. Because they have to be easy enough that you have a hope of solving them in two hours. Though some of them we continue through multiple weeks. Uh, but at least you want to make some progress in two hours, otherwise you feel like you're wasting time. And it's kind of discouraging. Uh, but you also don't want the problem to be so easy that uh, you know, it's not worth writing a paper about. So the challenge is to find this balance and also hoping that the problem is within the scope of the material that you just taught. Because it's unsolved, no one knows whether these techniques will apply. But uh, by bringing a few problems to the table, uh, and uh, also by the end, students were bringing in their own suggested problems, uh, you, you can get lucky. <laughs> and so in the, in the session, um, there are about a dozen people typically would show up each week. It would shift a little bit who has the time, because um, it is kind of extracurricular. Uh, but we would get together, I would describe the problems, usually within just a few minutes, um, and remind people of the past problems from past weeks and update if people had any progress since the last week, then they would present what, they, what their ideas were or what their things were. But then mostly, uh, most of the time is spent brainstorming. So um, often we were in a room that had lots of little kind of corners, each with whiteboards. So often different people would say, oh, you want to work on this problem? If so, come to this little corner. And then they would work in that corner on their problem. And so there'd be a few different groups, uh, each of like three or four people brainstorming about some problem. Oh, maybe we could do this. What if we applied this technique we just learned from class and this sort of thing. And then I would jump around from corner to corner and try to give my advice like, oh, have you tried this? Oh, this paper seems relevant. Maybe you should read this one. Um, and then in the span of those two hours, often we would solve the problems we would look at. Certainly not all of them, but I would say maybe half of the problems that we set out to solve, we, we actually did uh, by the end. Um, many of those turned into the final projects for students in the class, so that was another motivator for people to come. Um, and many of them have been published since, so uh, they're now papers in the literature, and uh, it's been a nice way to progress the, the field of hardness proofs. And I, I think this approach is really powerful uh, in general for probably for more advanced classes, uh, like advanced undergraduate and graduate classes. Um, anywhere people are comfortable uh, going that extra step and trying out research, I think this is a really powerful technique of combining teaching the latest material in an area and then trying to push those frontiers and solve new problems. It takes extra effort, but um, most professors are also researchers in addition to teachers, so uh, they should all try it. <laughs> and I'd be happy to give them advice for how to do it. It's, um, I I've been doing it for several years in all of my advanced classes. And uh, uh, in the beginning, it was, it was a little, there are lots of kinks to work out and figuring out what's the right level of problem. Uh, but uh, now it, it works pretty well and pretty consistently. I think, um, one key to making these problem sessions work is uh, you can't be the only driving force. You need to orchestrate 
the students to be uh, willing to speak up. I mean, it's always a challenge in lectures to get students to ask questions, but this is like way beyond asking questions. Now they have to like suggest answers uh, and suggest ideas, and they have to be in an environment where they're comfortable voicing uh, their ideas and not being uh, too, mu too self-critical. So when you're solving problems, it's really, usually most ideas don't work, that's life. But uh, silence is like the worst thing for solving problems. So even if you have like a kind of lame idea, like you know it doesn't work, it's still worth saying it because it might inspire someone else to have a second idea and then a third idea. And just keeping the conversation going is really critical. Um, so I think whatever you can do to encourage that kind of, like including yourself asking silly questions that may not, you know, don't, the answer doesn't really tell you, well, that's the right way. Ask, you know, being comfortable uh, not knowing the answers and uh, asking uh, initially stupid questions that might lead into interesting directions, I think, will encourage the students to do the same. And it doesn't work for everyone. Some students remain quiet throughout the whole semester, but hopefully they at least got to see this picture of how research happens. That's, that's sort of the goal. The problem sessions are definitely a much more personal interaction with me, and so they feel a lot more comfortable around me um, as, the, as the professor. Uh, and so, yeah, they're definitely more comfortable asking, asking questions in lecture, and uh, it just generally leads to a nice kind of, I mean, it's really a bonding experience, I would say. So I see it, especially within the group, that uh, they're super comfortable working with each other because they've solved so many problems together. There's this, there's this camaraderie of, you know, we can tackle anything. And so, um, so this problem session is considered continued way past the end of semester. It's been going for another year since. Hopefully it will continue going. Of course, some students will graduate and leave. But uh, it's actually been great for my research. If I have a new hardness problem, I can bring it to the the problem session and like wolves, they'll, they'll attack it and usually we'll, we'll get a solution uh, within a few weeks. So, so it's really, um, and, I, and a, a big part of that I think is because they've shared this experience and they've solved so many things together that uh, it really, they have a lot of confidence in this, in this context. So.